This just happened. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. Our lead story and unprecedented collapse confirms that the unthinkable is about to hit the U.S. economy, and many said this would not happen. And that's what we're doing in New York today is to get to the bottom of this because many believe the worst is behind us and that the soft landing is here. And as you're about to see, the worst is yet to come. Now, it's over to Bloomberg where I want to set today's story up. I want you to see how investors are viewing the economy. Then we're going to look at how consumers are viewing the economy and wait till you see what just happened. This is an unprecedented collapse and it's all going to make sense that indeed, the worst is yet to come. And B of A now poll shows U.S. stock optimism at the highest level since 2021. And investors are most overweight U.S. stocks since December of 2021. And all this does is support the view that many people believe we're on the cusp of the next big bull market in stocks. They believe in the soft landing narrative and that the economy is indeed going to rebound from here. And yet in a big way. But well, we'll soon find out that isn't the case at all. There's a record optimism on rate cuts and 79% of the survey response expect the global economy to experience either a soft or no landing in 2024. In fact, most respondents see stocks as the best way to play the Fed rate cutting cycle. And so here you have the case as we always see is the Fed drives rates up, they invert the yield curves and money curves. And next thing you know, any talk of a rate cut gets investors bullish on the equity market because they've been conditioned to believe this. And yet, every past cycle, what we see is one or two cuts leads into a whole bunch of them and in a big way. The earnings season is another stock market catalyst to watch out for. Only 21% of investors think profits will actually get worse in the next 12 months, down from 26% from last month and the lowest since February 2022. And of course, this validates that investors believe that companies are going to continue to be able to maintain those profit margins from the pandemic. Of course, that all goes in line with the economy needs to either boom, or as we talked about in the show over the weekend, that we need to see a lot of companies cutting headcount, trying to maintain their profit margins. And that alone should be a huge red flag of what is coming. And here you can see the corporate profits after tax, while investors believe these are going to continue to rise, supporting equity prices, continue claims as we show in red says, well, the opposite is more likely to come true because as more people are on unemployment, well, they tend to spend less and that lack of spending feeds back into corporate profits. As you can see here, a rise in continued claims going to the dot-com bubble and corporate profits decline. They went down in a big way going into, of course, the global financial crisis crisis and now seeing of course a rise in continued claims investors are still really bullish on the equity market which couldn't be very misplaced optimism given what is likely to come and participants are still adding large sums of money into money market funds with cash levels at 4.8 percent in january investors poured a record 1.2 trillion amount in cash funds last year far overshadowing the amount that went into global equities implying that many investors missed out on the rally and are looking for big opportunities in fact the most crowded trade currently is going long on the magnificent seven suggesting investors want to play this market and take advantage of it the problem is they're all powerful piled into the same seven stocks, suggesting they should be looking elsewhere, much like the company for our sponsor for today's show, Hillcrest Energy. You can find them on the CSE under symbol HEAT and on the OTCQB under symbol HLRTF. All the information in the pinned comment and description below, because if you're looking to get into this market, no point in buying stuff that's at the top. What you look for is companies with innovative technology like Hillcrest that develops electric power conversion technologies tailored to the next generation e-mobility powertrains and grid connected power systems. So if you're worried that you may have missed out on the big run up in companies tied to the EV market like Tesla, the next phase of this 
isn't going to be in the manufacturing side, it's going to be on the technology side, and Hillcrest is well positioned to be a leader here because they're the first to market with a revolutionary inverter technology platform, and get this, it has next generation capabilities to save manufacturers $2,200 per vehicle and brings a 99.6% inverter efficiency among other advantages compared to current inverters on the market, suggesting that this company's technology Technology, when it makes its way into the EV space could be a huge boom for its stock. And again, we know that EVs are going to be driving the future of the U.S. auto sales market and manufacturers are going to be looking for innovative and disruptive technology to maintain their profit margins. Here you can see in this chart that sales forecasts are expected to go a lot higher. Now let's talk about where the consumer is at here is because U.S. consumer debt soared to new heights in the run up to the holiday season. So we're taking a look at where investors at really believing the economy is going to boom here the problem is consumers are just loaded up with debt and so really the question is going to and be answered here soon is are consumers able to keep maintaining their spending level or are they completely tapped out and consumer borrowing spiked by 23.75 billion in November, more than doubling economists' expectations for a 9 billion increase in sending outstanding credit balances north of the 5 trillion mark for the first time on record. Because if the case here that consumers are indeed tapped out, then what we're about to see is a massive collapse in the data. Well, that's exactly what happened today. The monthly increase during the critical holiday shopping month was driven by higher rates of revolving credit, which includes mostly credit cards, which soared by nearly $19.5 billion, the third highest monthly increase on records going back to 1943. And credit card usage in buy now, pay later seemingly surged during the holidays on top of already hefty debt loads. Now delinquencies are at their highest level since 2012. So we start to get some picture here that consumers are indeed tapped out, or at least they're getting to that point. And so that suggests that in order for companies to maintain their profit margin as well, they have to do exactly what we talked about on the show yesterday, and that is lay off more people. So the notion here that of course companies can maintain these profit margins by cutting a few employees and continuing to have demand for their products and services, well, something is going to give. And that seems to debunk the normalization thesis offered by banks and card issues, as in delinquencies were artificially low during the pandemic because of stimulus and people spending less, so we knew they would rise back to 2019 levels. But the problem is now, They've surpassed that. And you can see that when delinquency rates get impacted on corporate profits, well, it's pretty obvious when people are tapped out on their credit, in fact, they can't pay their bills even, well, they don't go to the store and spend, and that means corporate profits come down. This time, investors not believing that this is a base case, that this rise in delinquencies is going to stick. In fact, they believe that we're going to see the mythical soft landing be achieved, and that would, of course, mean that consumers can start paying on their debt and still have money left to spend. The only problem is they're likely not going to do that. But we know that no matter what happens during a recession, people are going to be buying cars. And of course, they're going to be buying EVs. And possibly that will at some point have the technology from Hillcrest Energy on the CSC under heat, OTCQB, HLRTF. Because look at this trans traction inverter. It's the most efficient inverter available at 99.6% efficiency. It eliminates switching losses. It has a proprietary combination of their hardware and software that can operate on virtually any motor. And this is important because you think that manufacturers are gonna look for any edge in technology, not only for cost savings, but to make their cars stand out as forms of the technology. OEMs are gonna be looking at this in a big way. Because what we can see with Hillcrest product, like not only do they have a 99.6% efficiency, they have an up to 50% reduction in the size of DC link capacitors. Their tra traction battery pack leads to a 15% reduction in size, expanded charging capabilities, and the elimination of an onboard charger due to their technology, among other things, poising of putting Hillcrest to be one of the leaders in this space that would send their stock going to who knows how high because it is technology like this that people are going to be looking for in a big way.
And one thing you can note is not only are they looking at potential $2,200 per savings per vehicle, you're looking at a 300 pound reduction in battery weight, meaning manufacturers need fewer battery cells, a reduction in the complexity of the system, reduction of end of life battery waste, and of course, critical a reduction in use of critical EV minerals. You get you can find them on the CSE under heat and on the OTCQB under HLRTF. But now let's look at what just impacted the economy in a big way because this is an outright collapse of the data. And what this suggests is a US recession is indeed here. And perhaps this is the beginning. So not where investors think that of course we're almost through this and we're seeing a soft landing. We made the case before that if we see a downturn in the data coming into the beginning of the year, that it means consumers are tapped out and it's game over. Well, the problem is, it's over. New York factory index slumps now to the lowest level since May of 2020, as the Federal Reserve Bank of New York's general business conditions decreased a whopping 29.2 points in January to minus 43.7. A read below zero indicates a contraction, and well, that was a massive contraction, suggesting that something went wrong in the New York manufacturing sector in a big way. And when we see huge declines in demand, well, it tells you, that's what means is new orders should be dropping, business activity is down, and that will eventually lead to layoffs. And all this does is validate. Consumers are tapped out. We didn't hit the numbers everyone wanted in the fourth quarter, and now spending is indeed drying up. And of course, that will have a major impact on corporate profits as we continue to theme with that in blue. As we look at the New York general business conditions shown in red, that huge drop that we have not seen since a massive drop since 2021. You go back to prior recessions. This is solely in deep recession territory, which indicates to me that this is not just what is already behind us, but this is the beginning of what is to come. And that's something virtually nobody has priced into it. Not the central bankers, not the investors, not the economists, nobody. And new orders slumped more than 38 points to minus 49.4, the weakest since April 2020, while shipments dropped the most since August. The index of current employment showed a slower rate of contraction. Of course, we know that, of course, employers want to keep employees around, but this all this validates exactly what we said was likely to happen. What we're seeing around the world is demand was collapsing, and what this means is new orders should have dropped. They did, but it was fast. They dropped as quickly as they did at the beginning of the year, so Yes, things are indeed going to get much worse. And here we can say for the labor market that everyone's pinning the success of the U.S. economy on, well, it's only a matter of time before companies start to realize that they don't need all these extra workers and the time to send them to the unemployment line. We look to the past here and we see current new order book for New York against a four-week moving average for initial claims in red. And sure enough, declines in new orders, as we've noted in the past, lead to higher unemployment claims because if you don't have work for your workers, well, you don't need them. Now, you do need them to work through your backlogs. The problem is those are going away too. And here you can see the current unfilled orders diffusion index for New York in blue. Again, it gets the four-week moving average initial claims in red. And we can note that the backlog of work in the New York manufacturing sector has been getting drained repeatedly over and over, suggesting now it's only a matter of time before the labor market is the next to go. At the same time, the six-month outlook for overall activity improved to a three-month high, suggesting manufacturing will stabilize at a weak level, at least many are hoping. A measure of outlook for capital expenditures increased to the highest level since April of 2023, suggesting a pickup in investment. But again, if the economy continues to slow down, do not expect that optimism to hold much longer. And this puts us at the beginning of what could be a major downturn. But one thing we think will be headed higher as again, their technology gets their way into many EVs as manufacturers look for an edge. And that is our sponsor, Hillcrest Energy. They have a current market cap of 22 million. Of course, that number could go way up if their technology makes it into many mainstream vehicles. And they've got 100% of their owned 
IP portfolio, which is a huge competitive advantage. They own the technology. You've got seven co-development projects with EV and grid connected power system partners, putting them to be poised as a leader in this space. And right now their stock is sitting in a supply zone where buyers have been snapping up right around 20 cents a share, putting them as a huge opportunity to be added to your portfolio. But now let's talk about the economy some more because what's going on here is many believe that the worst is behind us. But as you now see with the New York data, the worst actually may be ahead of us. As the U.S. economy has already seen 75% of the impact from the Fed hikes, according to the International Monetary Fund, we have to recognize there's been a lot of resilience in the economy despite rate hikes that we've seen. Our estimate is that for the U.S. about three quarters or 75% of the transmission has already gone through and the rest will go this year, suggesting the worst now is actually behind us, according to the IMF's deputy management director. The problem here is, no, these hikes have not passed through the system. No, the worst is actually to come because we're seeing a drawdown now. The worst case scenario is when we run out of those backlogs, there's not enough new orders, and eventually the manufacturers cannot keep workers around because they don't have the money to pay them. They'll put them on the employment line, their spending will go down, and in turn, it will pass across to the services sector with a matter of a few months lag. And what universally true is we have households and corporations with stronger balance sheets. Well, that is a fantasy because money goes and money goes quick when people are out of work. And we've seen effects, but we've also seen resilience. Labor markets are slowing, but at a much more gradual pace, which is why I think at the IMF level, we feel the soft landing scenario, the probabilities have come up quite a bit because inflation has come down without needing that much of a loss in terms of economic activity. Well, that until we saw the New York data today suggesting economic activity is indeed plummeting and it's a labor market that is indeed the next to go. And Rogoff sees six Fed cuts as pipe dream if economy holds up. Meanwhile, the Fed has been clear. There's only three coming this year. But, of course, the market says six. This guy says there's going to be a whole lot more. And the Federal Reserve won't deliver the six interest rate cuts traders are betting on for 2024 unless the U.S. somehow succumbs to a deep recession. This is according to Harvard University professor Kenneth Rogoff. That's a pipe dream if we have a soft landing. And it's not happening. We'll get two or three of the former IMF Chief economist told Bloomberg, no, the reality is if we get a deep recession and definitely it could happen, how it's going to happen, he doesn't know. Well, we already know how it's going to happen when you constrict the creation of credit, but he claims a 25% chance it does. And well, they will cut rates a lot, not six times. Well, they could cut rates five, fifth, up to 15 times. He says, we'll make the case why the Fed's going back to zero, potentially sometime even this year. And as always with any company we feature on our show, you're under no obligation to purchase their stock. Be sure to do your own research for placing, for placing any trades. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.